The Gopher Coaches Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Yeah, we're rising. Now, it's the Gopher Coaches Show with Dawn Plitzewhite and Ben Johnson. Welcome into the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks alongside my right hand man, Justin Gard, and women's head basketball coach, Don Plitzewhite. Coach, once again, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here, Ahmad. I know, right? I know, not so great stuff that we have to talk about, so I want to start with the bad news first. Obviously, you guys lost to Illinois yesterday, five point loss, but in that game, you suffered an even bigger loss. Mar Braun went down with a foot injury. She'll be out indefinitely as she requires surgery. Who has to fill that void on your team? Well, first of all, certainly a tough break for, for Mara, certainly a tough break for our team. You know, we're really excited about the, the fact that one of the phrases we use in our program all the time is the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm. And we know how competitive Mara is and how she attacks everything she does with that competitive fire and juice. And so we know that she is going to make this comeback and, and be better because of this, even though this is a setback along the way, right? We also know that we have young ladies who are ready to step up and now they have an opportunity to help us and maybe do it in a little different way, obviously. But Janae Sanders is someone who at the, at the perimeter has to be someone who fills that void for us. Maggie Sinano is someone who we're going to be expecting big things out of. And, you know, they're both veteran young ladies. They're both upperclassmen. And so uh, I, they've been through tough situations <laughs> before yeah. and they're going to find a way to help us be successful to, to what their capabilities are. And maybe we have to tweak some things that we're doing and we'll go ahead and do that. Then. Sure. As someone who's had an injury herself back in the playing days, I mean, what do you hope Mara's role is on the team or what do you expect her role is going to be like knowing her while she's not on the floor still helping out where she can you know that's a great question I think certainly when players have a, a setback and an injury what, what a lot of people don't understand is how much time it takes mm -hmm. on top of what they're normally doing so Mara is someone who puts a lot of time into shooting those type of things my guess is she's going to find a way to do that from a chair or <laughs> you know from whatever capability she's able to do that be a practice also do her rehab but Mara is someone who sees the game at a really high level we talk about that how her basketball IQ is very high and this allows her an opportunity to see it even with a, a different set of lenses, if you will. And Mara is someone who's going to be in coaching at some point in time. And so this is an opportunity to see it from a, a coaching side of things. At the same time, she, is, she needs to be an energy giver for her team and mm -hmm. do all the things that, from a communication standpoint, that we need. And I know she'll do a great job of that as well. Now, I know we've covered Mara Bryan. Coach, will move on because you have a lot more players on this team. And that game yesterday versus Illinois, you guys were in control for what seemed like a majority of the game, then that collapsed late. What was your message to the team following that loss yesterday? Well, I think we're getting better. You know, we certainly are. We're looking at the little ways that from a development standpoint that we're improving, whether that's in our communication on the court, whether that's in, you know, how we're helping each other defensively. And we saw a lot of those good things happening uh, during the course of that game. And so we really focus on who we are and how we're improving. And we're doing that right now. We need to continue doing that. So when you look at the, the youth of your team, is this a thing where they also need to learn didn't take much for Illinois to get going, right? I mean, it was a quick, like, 7-0 run. I think Amaya hit the bank shot to put you back up 11. Then all of a sudden, those two guards had a couple of big plays, buildings on fire. That was like 50 seconds. But that's life in the Big Ten, right? I mean, just a small circuit like that just got them back in the game. Well, it's an, it, amazing right now how veteran the Big Ten really, truly is. And, mm -hmm. and the, this conference right now, this is the Big Ten is probably about maybe the most veteran conference, I, I'd have to say, and comparing yeah. us to some other Power Five conferences still. You know, but also you're in the COVID years of every roster you seem to look at is grad grad students, <laughs> senior plus, I'm not really sure yeah. what senior plus is, yep. right? But there are so many experienced players. And then when they want to impose their will, what is that? And different teams do it differently. What does that look like? And how do you work to counter that? And how do you answer that? And those are all things that, that we've got to continue to get better at. You guys do have a young core here uh, in Minnesota. Indiana is one of those teams that's pretty experienced, has a lot of success when it comes to winning. What did you take away from that game and how your team played? And was it just, you know, a lopsided loss where you kind of move on, you don't think about it? Or you're like, hey, we need to watch this and learn from all of it? Well, actually, we, we watch our opponents and some things that we're trying to work on within our style, offensively, defensively, whether that's how they set screens or maybe that's how they help each other when, they're, when their teammate is being screened. And so we, we look at examples of those type of things and say, this is when we say help each other on screens. This is what, this is what it should look like. This is what right. we're trying to do. 
trying to do, right? And, and what we can see on film is we're doing more of those things. And, and that's what we have to continue to focus on right now. Now, you obviously were helping on screens and everything else against Michigan State. You held yeah. them at the barn to their lowest uh, point total by far. I think it was like 65 before they played the Gophers. It was 50 that afternoon at Williams. So what was clicking that day, certainly defensively, for a team that averaged close to 90 points coming in? Well, I thought we did a great job of really being active off the ball, and that's something that you know we're going to continue to work on that aspect of it. At the same time, you know, they didn't make as many shots as they normally make, too. And so that helped us with that growing and, and developing piece of it. But I also thought we were just really kind of zipping and popping defensively and made a lot, a lot of good things happen. And then we're able to get out in transition and, and create an early offense for us. Defense always leads to the best offense. At least that's what I was told playing Little League basketball. Now, Coach Amaya Battle is someone when I watch, she's very interesting because when she's driving to the basket to score, this team is completely different. But when she's driving to pass, teams kind of key in on that. She was particularly really aggressive versus Wisconsin down the stretch, where I think she had like 10 points in the final 12 minutes of the game. How do you get a player to be that aggressive from the beginning of the game? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, and, and Maya is someone who I, certainly her game has just continued to grow throughout the course of this season. And, and her comfort in terms of being a communicator is continuing to grow and and so her and her confidence is growing and she's someone who is just it's it's fun to watch that watch her evolve and develop at this point in time and so we'll keep working on that that's that's something that is going to be really important for our, our team and for her at the same time and when we had her on the set we talked a little bit about her improved jump shot and obviously we see her there driving to the basket but just how much has that improved jump shot maybe made it a little bit easier for because there's times where I'm watching where I can tell she knows she can blow by the person guarding right. her and she just gets it in her mind that that's going to happen but part of the reason is because they're crowding her because she can hit from the outside now isn't that fun it helps Isn't it fun when the game starts to, to grow and, and evolve and we talk about the game slowing down and, and I think when you when you can use your shot as a way to get by somebody it just it, it opens so many more things up and the game starts to slow down and you can start picking people apart and we're just you don't typically get to that point until you're probably a junior or a senior. Right. And so we're trying to kind of expedite that process a little bit, if you will. Well, speaking of shooting, you guys have one of the best shooting guards, I feel like, in the country in freshman Grace Koholsky. She shoots with confidence every time we watch her play. And earlier this week, I got a chance to sit down with her and chop it up about where her skills came from and what Minnesota means to her. Check it out. All right, I'm standing next to freshman sharpshooting guard Grace Koholsky. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. So first I want to start with where does this confidence come from as a basketball player? Because when I watch you, it seems like you're an upperclassman already. I think I'd say just the upbringing that I had in the, like, in the basketball world and just having all that confidence in me for my teammates, coaches, family, everything. So. Couple of state championships in high school. I feel like Coach Plitzewhite, her resume, all she's done is win. And I look at your resume and you've done a lot of winning. Where does that come from? Did that get instilled in you from your parents or something? Yeah, for sure. I think just always having like high expectations and just that will to win. And I know Coach, Coach has that and she believes in that in me. So. When I watch your game the other day, you just shoot with confidence. It seems like you don't even think about it. Where did that come from? Was it just practice as a little girl where you're like, all right, I know I can shoot? Or was it your teammates that it kind of instilled that in you? Just, yeah, practice, practice, practice always. <laughs> and just like always like staying after doing stuff like that. And just, yeah. Graholski, range unlimited. When did you realize you were a sharp shooting guard? Oh, um, I'd say like when I was little, I think even in like third and fourth grade, I would just shoot threes. So mm -hmm. I think probably then. Okay. Now we're standing on the M right now. Why was Minnesota important to you and why did you want to play under Coach Plitz White? I mean, it was really important for me to have like people that I trusted and people that trusted me. And I think like that's one of the most important things people should look for when they're looking for a school, and I had that here. Okay, so now let's talk about your season. You're second on the team in points average right now. Where's your favorite spot on the court? Because when I, like I said, when I watch you play, you're letting it fly from anywhere. So please walk me to your favorite spot. Where do, where are we going, and why is that your favorite spot? We're gonna go. With, we're gonna go with the wing. Okay. Why is it the? Why do you like the wing so much? Um, I think there's just a lot of different ways to get here. I think. Okay. You come off screens coming up. You come mm -hmm. off screens this way. And 
Yeah, I think it's also a good place to offensive rebound from. Okay. They forget about you out here. Got it. So. Yeah. All right. Well, you got to show off the stroke for us. So, oh wow. Uh, you haven't warmed up at all. I have to say this. So I'm putting her on the spot right now. Are you gonna nail this first shot? Let's see. I'll give her a good pass. <laughs> one take. Oh my God. I have to ask you one final question now. Where does Grace Goholski go from here? I feel like the sky is the limit for you. What are you hoping to get out of your time here at Minnesota? Just hoping to make friends for life and continue to have a relationship with my coaches and just have a great experience. And I know the Gophers haven't been to the NCAA tournament in quite some time. How exciting would that be for you guys to get over that hump and get there? So exciting. I think that's definitely a goal of ours and just getting as far as we can and having a, having another good year. Man, you have such a bright future here in Minnesota, you know that. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, this was really fun and all, but I have to go get ready for practice, so. Oh, all right, well, go do your thing. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, she walks off to practice. Um, she said right there that the, the wing is one of her favorite places to shoot. I feel like she's already, in her short time here, made a couple of huge shots for she you guys is. from that wing spot, including you know the shot against Wisconsin to put you up too. I thought that was the dagger. I mean, because we've seen that from her so many times this year. She is someone who can really hit shots from a lot of different spots. Yeah. Don't let her fool you. But she is pretty good in front of the wing, that is for sure. And, and what a youthful exuberance. Good piece. A lot of fun. Oh, uh, Coach, also talking about shooters, McKenna Johnson, early enrollee that you brought in. What are some of the benefits with having a, a basketball player or a college athlete just enrolling early and getting familiar with the system? Well, it certainly provides an opportunity for her to get to know how we do things and then learn as the season goes on. At the same time, she jumps in right in the middle of it, right? right. So she doesn't have the, the base to understand a lot of things, so she asks a ton of questions. But it's going to be very, very helpful for her moving forward because she's going to have seen at least a few months before yeah. the summertime of what it looks like and understand how challenging it is, but also it's basic, simple, fundamental basketball. And real quick, for the Gopher fans that don't know much about McKenna Johnson, can you describe her as a basketball player? I know we have some of her highlights from her uh, high school days coming up. Right. McKenna is someone who we got to know when we got here to Minnesota. A lefty shooter, really attacks at a high level, can score it from the arc, can get to the rim, can pull up, gets her teammates involved. A really feisty type of competitor. We like those. So someone that you love, I'm sure. She's a lot of fun to be around, <laughs> absolutely. Well, we have another player who's also really fun to be around. Mallory Heyer will join us on the other side of the break. And she's one of the, the star players on this Gophers team and that young core that they have. So we'll talk with her coming up on the other side of the break. You're watching the Gopher Coaches Show. Yeah, we're rising up. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gar, Coach Plitza White, and another star from the Gophers team, Mallory Heyer. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Oh, not a problem at all. So I want to talk about your season that you're having this year. Last year, I mean, I feel like you, Amaya Battlemar, Bron, and so many others were just doing everything for the Gophers at such a young age this year. Do you feel like it all slowed down for you? Yeah, I think it definitely has slowed down a little bit. I think last year was a, a great start for us, and we were able to get a lot of experience playing as freshmen, and I think that's really carried into the season, and we're still working on improving our game. So, Take us into your rebounding mentality, where you said earlier this season, I just feel like I want to get every single rebound, sometimes to the chagrin of your teammates who are in good position <laughs> and you steal it from them. Uh, so no, number one, do they ever get mad at you for taking their rebounds? And number two, when did you realize rebounding was a huge, going to be a huge part of your game because you're one of the best in the country at it? Sometimes, I mean, I think my teammates get a little mad that I steal the rebounds from them. But honestly, I don't really care who's there. I just go up and <laughs> grab the ball. Um, and I just think rebounding is a huge part of my game, and it is a way to help my team. And it really gets me going, too. So I how love to you, get rebounds. How would you best describe your game? Because, you know, you don't have the height of a true traditional center or power forward in college basketball, yet you do everything for this team. Yeah, I think it's just about helping the team in whatever way I need to, um, being able to play more than one position and being able to rebound the ball, also like score, do whatever my team needs me to do on each given night. So, right. Coach P, I'm sure you were aware of Mallory Heyer from your previous stop at South Dakota. I'm sure you watched your team growing up. Um, but I, I'm sure you also did a very deep dive, big deep dive on Mallory once you got here. So when you watched a film from a year ago, what jumped out about her game? Well, Mallory has such a unique skill set. Right, because a lot of really toughness players that go and rebound and are flying around aren't necessarily also finesse skilled players too. And she has that as well. So she shoots it well from the arc. 
She passes extremely well. She's probably one of our best post passers, if not our best. Please don't get a mind. Mine might be mad at you now, too. Teammates are mad at you for stealing rebounds. Now, oh, Maya's going to be upset because I'm calling you maybe the best post passer. But she does such a good job of being really skilled. And I think her skill is continuing to grow, and I think she can still develop on that end of it. But she's got both of them. She's toughness and she's skilled. Mallory, what do you think Coach P has been able to bring out of you this season that maybe you didn't know you had inside you? Um, Probably just, like, playing super hard on both ends of the floor and just, like, diving for loose balls and just, like, that toughness and that grittiness. Um, that I think she's brought that out of everyone on our team and just playing with that fire consistently. Okay. Do you, you know when I asked Mallory a question? Sorry to interrupt. I asked Mallory a question early on. said, when was the last time you took a charge? Did you? Ooh. And I think she said, I don't think I've ever taken a charge. Oh, wow. But she's taking them. <laughs> she's taking them this year, Occasionally. right? Occasionally. I don't think I've gotten one yet. In practice, you In have. practice, I have. Yeah, In I was practice. Say that. Now that you mention it. It's yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. Think. I'm calling it right here on the show. It's going to happen. So the next time you draw a charge, we're going to have a whole segment about that, you taking okay. charge. Right. The anatomy of a charge. Kind of <laughs> the anatomy. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. Now I want to talk about the anatomy of your guys' team chemistry. I feel like you guys just, every time I see pictures from Trend or the Gopher Women's Basketball account on social media, you guys are smiling, you're laughing, you're having a good time. It looks like you love to be around one another. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, we do love to be around each other, and I think that builds off the court, too. We're all really great friends, and we spend time together off the court, and I think that translates onto the court, and that helps us build our chemistry. Okay, one question I want to ask you. Amaya Battle kind of gave me this assist. I know she's good at giving out assists to you guys. She says, Grace Groholsky has a cheese drawer, and Grace told mm -hmm. me that she keeps all types of cheeses in this. So have you seen that drawer, and have you ever seen anything like that before? Yeah, I did. Over the summer, I actually like had to live with um, G and um, AJ in their apartment because I was like homeless for a little bit while our apartment was getting done. Um, but anyways, two Wisconsin natives. That's yep. probably okay. important when it comes to the yeah. cheese. So thing. I stayed with them, and that was really really fun to get to know them. And she does have a che cheese drawer. So is that, that is that normal for people from Wisconsin, or is that just coach? Like uh, I hate <laughs> to say this because I, I do not have a cheese drawer. No, not really. But not are, yet. are you a big fan of cheese, though? Really? Anyone? Okay, so that's just a grace type thing? Pizza. Yeah, I, it's, yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. But I will say the people who go to Wisconsin, who are from Wisconsin and go back to Wisconsin, bring back that squeaky cheese yes. thing. Uh -huh. Everyone in our family likes that, except for me. But <laughs> So, I, and Grace and I have had some conversations about squeaky cheese, just so you know. Okay. Uh, one other question that I have for you, Mallory, while I have you. Um, we were talking about music selection with this team, and we understand that Coach P has a really good selection. I heard it's very diverse from everyone on this team, but when it comes to you, you are hardcore country all the time. That's yep. what I was told. So how difficult is it to get them to play your music when you're working out? Yeah, I'm definitely country 24-7 <laughs> all the time before games. Um, it's just something that like calms me down and I just love to listen to. But in practice, yeah, people aren't really a big fan of it, so it's hard. I mean, I get a song here and there. Just, just here and there. Here and there, I'll get Give a song. Give them a few more rebounds. Maybe they'll be more amenable. I know. <laughs> but, but you also, I mean, you've had games where you've hit five threes. You've had games where you've hit six threes. At some point, don't you have to say, you know, I kind of carried us in the mission. <laughs> game can I get a little Kenny Chesney or something I mean can you can you pull that kind of rank I don't know we'll see I'll have to, to try it out so who are the artists that you listen to Morgan Wallen okay um, Luke Combs I okay. love Luke Combs um, who else? Thomas Rhett I know the first two. I don't know Thomas Ray. I may have to add him to my <laughs> Apple playlist when I leave here. Luke Combs covered Fast Car, which for us was Tracy Chapman back That's in right. the day. Back mm -hmm. in the day. And the, the kids don't even know. The, kids don't know, about, the, the kids don't know about Tracy Chapman, but Luke did a nice job with it. it All is right, good. Mallory, one final question before we let you go. Your favorite part of this season, or what are you most looking forward to? My favorite part of the season has probably just been obviously winning a lot. I think we've done a great job this season, and I'm just excited for the rest of the season and for especially like the postseason um, tournament and stuff like that. But, yeah, just working day by day um, to get better. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. That's Mallory Heyer. Coming up on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about the Gophers' next opponent, which happens to be Penn State, plus the growth of the women's college basketball game. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gar, Coach Blitzer White. We used our final timeout, so now we're going all in. <laughs> Coach, Penn State coming up this week. Last year, you guys went 2-0 and versus them in the regular season, but lost to them in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. Do you even bring that up to your team this year, or do you just move forward? Well, we really just move forward. We look at 
they're they're a much different team. We're a much different team at this point in time. They've brought in more veterans <laughs> <laughs> than they even had last year, which is and they're playing at a really high level. And since Ashley Owusu has been able to join them about five games ago, boy, they have been playing at kind of a rocket speed, if you will. Right. They play so fast. They and they make you play fast right along with them. So it'll be a high energy game. Huh? It will. And we're looking at number twenty right there, McKenna Marisa, who we were talking during the break. Feels like she's also been in state college forever. Right. Like forever. all of these players have been. So you know, she's a pretty explosive guard as well. What are, what are the keys against her? Well, she's someone, and I think this is true for a lot of players on the team, they, they shoot the ball so well. They score the ball at, a, I think they're scoring 87, 88 points a game in conference Sheesh. games, and they score at a 51% clip, and they're shooting it from the arc at something like between 42 to 44% clip. Yeah. And so she is one of those players who has the ability to make so many things happen and make it happen quickly, scoring at the rim, hitting open shots, and she does have a mid-range <laughs> game as well, and assists to her teammates. So everything they do is revolving around tempo and spacing. So you're well-versed on the scouting report already, I see. Well, we've got to go over that today with our team. <laughs> Coach, I want to ask you about the growth of the women's game. We have less than a minute remaining in the show. LSU versus South Carolina last week drew in more viewers than NBA on TNT. How special is that, and where is the women's game going? Well, it's really exciting to watch right now, and it's been fun to watch our crowds at the barn continue to For grow sure. throughout the course of, of this season. And, you know, I, I really believe that our young ladies are really fun to watch. And, mm -hmm. and so it's great to see overall – College women's basketball is it kind of exploding right now from a viewership standpoint, from a ticket sales standpoint. You know, it's also fun to watch our program continue to rise, too. All right. Well, your program, like we said, is headed in the right direction. So thank you for joining us this week. Up next, they have the Penn State Nittany Lions. Hopefully you guys bounce back, get a win. And then when we see you in a couple of weeks, we'll be talking about four straight wins for you guys. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Lock it up. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week.